My name is Virginia Clark, and I went to Nepal with my husband, Dr. Richard Clark, in 1967. But believe me, this whole desire to go to the mission field had been with me since I was a little girl. And when I was at the Linwood Camp Meeting in California, just nine years old, I heard Elder Eric B. Hare, Elder John Schaffernberg, and other great missionaries, Elder Munson saw his uh, chalk talks, and I decided that I was going to become a missionary. Well, Richard and I had a lot in common because he had been in China and that's where I had wanted to go. So when we talked before our marriage, we decided that we would be missionaries. Well, it didn't happen all at once because Richard had to finish medicine, internship, then we went into a practice up in Maine, which I loved, I loved Maine. Then Richard found out that there was a great need for a doctor in Nepal. And we decided we will answer that call, but we didn't tell anybody. And so a year and a half later, we got to Nepal. Now in those days, there was no mission institute. So we read books, but we really didn't understand what it was like to go to an Asian country. And when we got to Nepal, it was so totally different from anything I had ever known. And thank the Lord for Dr. Keith and Alice Sturges, who helped to introduce us to Nepal, took us to the bazaar, showed us all the strange vegetables, told us what it was, and they actually fed us at their table for three months. Well, anyway, after they left, we were very, very lonely. And there were only two little Indian children in our hospital compound and our three children. The Sturgis children were gone. Malcolm had a friend of sorts. We couldn't speak the language, so you weren't, there was no deep friendship, but there was one boy that seemed to hang on the gate and call for our oldest son all day, it seemed like. Poor Calvin, the middle child, he said, can't we ever be alone? But anyway, one day I said, to this boy, and we'll call him Lama, that, that's what everybody called him. That wasn't his real name, but that's how he was known. I spoke to him about coming up on Sabbath, maybe, and um, visiting our little tiny group, because he was always with us anyway, might as well come, and Malcolm invited him. And so we invited him to our home, and he came all clean and dressed up, but the wrong day and the wrong time, it was over with. But the next week he came, and he brought a friend. And after that, he began to bring more friends. And I had little songs and, and um, pictures and felts, and, and more and more children began to come to our home until finally there were at least 40 children on our carpet in our living room. Well, I couldn't speak the language, and so the nurses who could would interpret for me, and Raja, our x-ray technician, would sometimes help and explain things to the children. And so it just grew and grew until one day there were 109 children and I was petrified. And the reason was that we were not allowed to proselytize. And there was a law that we had signed in our contract for the hospital that we were not, that if anyone was found proselytizing, they would be sent out of the country in seven days. Any Nepalis that were involved would go to jail and our hospital would be confiscated without remuneration. And this was serious. It really was serious because nine years later, our Wycliffe Bible Society people were sent out of the country, all the families, because they had converts. Well, one day Raja 
was on the bus going to Kathmandu. And some men said to him, what is this about the doctor's wife proselytizing? And Raja, a very imposing looking man said, why all she's doing is telling stories. And he told them something about it. And they said, well, maybe we'll send our children there too. So the terrible responsibility of doing what the Lord seemed to put on my heart and still knowing the responsibility that I was carrying made me sick. I remember going out by myself and pleading with the Lord to take this away from me because everything was on my shoulders. The hospital could be taken over and we could be sent out with Sturgis and all of our nurses and everything taken over. So I was terribly troubled. I remember on Sabbath mornings becoming so sick to my stomach that I thought, I cannot do this. And yet the minute I stepped out of our dining room door into the living room with all the children on the, seated on the rug, all the enthusiasm I needed, all the feeling of fear was gone, and I was able to tell the, the little children the stories that I had and to sing the songs. Well, when the Sturges returned, five months later, they were very concerned because I was, they had this group of children. And Alice was particularly concerned. They had worked so hard to develop a good reputation for the hospital and had been so, so careful. And here I was, had this Sabbath school and Alice wouldn't come in. She would sit out on a garden swing with one of the nurses, terrified. And, but her husband would come in and sit among the children. And when nothing happened, and we seemed to be able to just carry on as before, after a while, Alice came in and she began to play the piano for me, and we became a team. That is how fearful it was. This Sabbath school went on for all the years that we were there. It had its ups and its downs, its fearful times. Teachers in the school would sometimes tell the children that if they went to that Sabbath school anymore that they would dock their grades, that they all dropped off excepting for a few. So that was something that we had to contend with the whole nine years. And then when we left, communism was coming in. And as we were going out on our way to India, because we were being transferred to India, young people, not the ones that I knew, banged on the truck and said bad words toward us. And I felt like such a complete failure and like we were hated. And so that was the way we left Nepal feeling like nothing good had ever been done. It sounds like we left feeling failures, and we did. It was a depressed time for us. But now, many years later, we have the perspective of looking back and seeing how things really developed. Malcolm, our oldest son, was the first Seventh-day Adventist to be baptized in Nepal. A year later, our second son, uh, Kelvin, was baptized, but the father of Deep Tapa, our health uh, minister for our mission, um, his father was baptized. So even though we left feeling discouraged, we really had accomplished something. And this is what happened. Dr. Sturges and my husband, Richard, talked together about sponsoring some of these young people who had been coming to Sabbath school to some schools in India, some Christian schools. We had tried very hard to start a school, but the government wouldn't permit it. In fact, the school was even built, and still we couldn't get permission from the government to start a school. 
even though they very much wanted us to teach English. So we sponsored four girls to Falakata. Now those girls were not happy. Girls are not free in Nepal. They're more protected. And so these girls found it very hard to be away from home. So that first year was difficult. I went down with our daughter Connie and we visited Falakata and I thought everything was wonderful and happy but in the end the girls cried and it was just impossible. So the next year we sent a boy named Prakash Shrestha and a girl named Prabha who had gone the first year. We sent them to another school. We sent them to a hill school called Assam Training School. And these young people and these people thought a little more like our hill people in Nepal. Interestingly enough, Prakash grows up to marry an American doctor, Dr. Sherry Reed. He becomes a doctor at Montemorelos Hospital down in Mexico and they came back to America, went back to Nepal several times, and then um, practiced in Nebraska. Now they are practicing up in British Columbia. They have their th uh, own daughters. They have three beautiful daughters. One has finished medicine. One has finished here at Andrews University. Um, her name is Jenny. And another one is, has finished um, physical therapy. They, this couple, Dr. Sherry Reed, uh, Shrestha, and her husband, Prakash, have sponsored all of their family to come to America, have financed them, bought a home for them. They have five young people who are going to Andrews University, and they live right across the street from us. And it's like, we left feeling failures many, many years ago, and now Nepal has come to us and lives next to us, which is just a wonderful thing, and we are the closest and dearest of friends. So Richard called the General Conference just before General Conference down in um, Indianapolis, um, not Indianapolis, in uh, San Antonio, and he found out that 8,000 Adventists have been, um, been baptized in Nepal.